Good morning, OwnRev family, and thanks for joining us for the Monday Morning Devotion brought to you by Own Your Health Revolution. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, along with my co-host, Gloria Strait, and she'll be closing us out in prayer today. We do this every Monday morning at 7.13 Central Standard Time, and it's about a 10 to 20 minute devotional to start your week off with positivity. And so this week, during our 90 day challenge, uh, we have been challenged to express gratitude every single day. And this can be done in many different ways. So let's go ahead and dig into what this is all about because it's not always an easy task. And cultivating a heart of gratitude is the beginning of unlocking joy in your life. And it can restore your mind, it can restore your heart and restore your spirit and your soul. And giving and showing and expressing gratitude is such a humbling feeling, which is the opposite of pride. It is a way to edify and exalt others instead of ourselves, and it's happy-hearted instead of a, having a bitter or an angry heart. And this, um, There's no such thing as angry thankfulness. They contradict each other. So what I want to do is dig into the Bible and look at three people, three people in the Bible that are great examples for us um, at being grateful in different kinds of ways. And the first one is in Luke 17, 11 through 19. This is whenever Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. So starting in verse 11, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at, they stood at a distance and called out in a very loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising, G praising God in a very loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. So when I was reading this, can you believe that only one person returned to Jesus to say thank you. Only one. It's both amazing to think and sad at the same time that only one man returned to give thanks for healing from a debilitating disease. And I think it's, it's still sad to say, but I, I think I might be guilty of this too. And although I don't have a debilitating disease, there is so very much in my life to give thanks for. And I'm sure you can probably say the same, but Day in and day out, we can easily get caught up in life, the busyness, the tragedies, and even the, the busyness of all the good things happening in our life that we don't have time and that we might not even reflect to give thanks to God. It's not like we're trying not to, but so often we just get caught up and wrapped up in life that we don't really give thanks and praise to where all of this is coming from. And so I want to challenge you to don't be like one of the nine that was blessed and just simply moved on. Um, I want to uh, encourage you to stop and give incredible thanks for all God has done and is doing in your life. The second person um, is Paul. And he, I, one thing I love about him is he was not silent about his gratitude. Despite going through many trials and sufferings, he lived a life of gratitude and thankfulness. It wasn't generalized either. He named specific people and churches expressing his gratitude to let them know how much he appreciated how much he appreciated them and how they impacted his life and his ministry. In 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, Paul said, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. This is the same Paul who said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. It would make sense to me that his heart of gratitude and thankfulness helped carry him through the hard times and suffering and despair. And one of my favorite things about how he, should, how he showed gratitude is that he was such an encourager and people mattered to him. 
And people matter to God too, obviously, and individual people should matter to us too. It's important to take time to recognize and express appreciation to those around us. Every single person is important. And the social circle shouldn't matter. Um, if they're no longer part of the same business as you are, shouldn't matter. How much money they make shouldn't matter. We are all important to God, and it's important that we show love and appreciation to each other surrounding us as well. And then the last person I want to point out is Jesus himself. He is God, and technically, he doesn't necessarily require to give thanks to anything, yet he does, and he even serves us. He also gave praise to our Father God in so many ways. So three specific ways I want to point out is, real quick, he gave thanks as he was surrounded by thousands of hungry people, and he multiplied food. That's a pretty stressful situation, I would I would think. It would be um, stressful, but uh, uh, I would have anxiety maybe, just that so many people were looking to me and depending on me. I don't know. Uh, he also gave thanks to God for hearing his prayer for raising Lazarus before Ra Lazarus rose from the grave. And then the third way, um, which is hard for us to even comprehend, he knew the cross was before him. And he actually gave thanks to the Father as he broke bread and drank the cup with the, dis uh, drank the, cup with the, dis the disciples. We have a perfect example of praise and thanksgiving from Jesus. What I find interesting is that all three of the examples were tense situations. And the pressure to feed thousands, raise a friend from the grave, and to literally face death on a cross would be extremely intense for any of us. And Jesus' response was never to panic or run to people, but to turn to the Father. This is important because it's very easy, I think, uh, to ask our friends and colleagues and spouses for advice or position yourself as if it was you and not God that did the impossible. Sometimes we do that just because it's, I think, possibly human nature. And so we see in the Bible that positioning ourselves with a heart of thanksgiving, praise, appreciation, and gratitude is expected. Just like the man with leprosy, we must give thanks to God for all the amazing things that are happening in our lives. Just like Paul, we must give thanks and show gratitude toward each other and have a heart of thanksgiving even in the tough times. And just like Jesus, we must humble ourselves and give all the glory to God and trust that his will will be done. So what can we do to cultivate a natural response of thanksgiving and gratitude? Not just this month or not just this week in the own rev uh, challenge in the 90 day challenge, but at all times. I want to challenge you to start your day off with gratitude. Find something or someone that you're grateful to have in your life. Write it down. I want to challenge you. Join the Own Rev 90 Day Challenge this week and let us know the things that you're grateful for. If we are deliberate in doing this daily, it will become a habit. And then that will become a natural response in your heart and shift your spirit. It just feels good and it seems to cleanse the soul whenever we can uh, have that natural sense of gratitude in our heart when bad times come in our life if we can find the good the positivity the lessons that we can learn it really does shift your spirit and the last thing I want to leave you with um, is Psalm 136 verse 1 is give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love endures forever I love that song too glow can you uh, close us out in prayer as we get started for our week Yes, ma'am, I sure can. And that was an awesome, awesome, awesome reminder of just to remember, just to give thanks. You know, um, a lot of times we can just get caught up and, you know, forget about the, the small things, which are, to me, the most important things. Um, so, Father God, first of all, thank you. Thank you for just being God. Thank you for being who you are in our lives. Thank you for just being our supplier, being our father, being our savior, being our, our Lord and, and savior. And we just thank you. We thank you for everything that you've created on the earth. I mean, if I look at my hand, I couldn't even thank you enough for creating every pattern and design and imprint that you did for our fingerprints. And, you know, 
just everything you've created amazes me. And, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for just everything. And just as we continue um, our day, our week, um, our month, our year, Lord, we just pray that um, your Holy Spirit can remind us of those small things to to thank you and give you gratification for because our hearts of heart, we, we don't want to take you for granted. And even though we could easily do that, we want to strive to just thank you and be in your presence. I know whenever we thank you and, and show gratification to you, it's just reassurance to you of how we love you. And we just want to show you strong love like you have shown us strong love. We just pray for everybody on the call that they'll have a awesome day, awesome week. And one thing I just say thank you um, again for uh, is creating our mothers. You know, we just had Mother's Day yesterday, and we just thank you and appreciate you for creating our mothers and all the different things that they've done for us. Um, and we just thank you. We, we thank you and give thanks. And we just want to um, continue to do that in your precious son's name and follow his example in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Glow, for that. And we want to remind you all that we do record these and post them on social media on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud. If this message touches you, we'd love for you to share it with your friends and family. But more importantly, I want to challenge you to have a heart of gratitude and start by practicing this week. Don't be quiet about it either. Let people know that you love and appreciate them. Let God know that you appreciate the many blessings in your life and even the lessons that he's teaching you throughout your life. All right, guys, I want to thank each one of you for joining us this morning on the Own Rev devotional. Stay classy, folks. Classy, folks.